and it's time for another video and time to tell you what I rate and what I hate about this Sovereign watch. And by the way, my name is Troy, I'm bold and I collect watches and I have something very different today, a watch that has honestly blown me away. Sovereign is a new kid on the block and with their first release, they're looking to leave a lasting impression and they're wanting to get their wristwatch on your wrist and in your collection and by offering something different like the calendar rose I have here I can safely say they may succeed and I don't think many of you have got a watch quite like this in your collection. The watch is currently on a campaign over on Kickstarter and all colorways are on a limited run of 500 pieces. If you are interested in picking one of these up there is a super early bird price of $515. The final release will have the following changes. There'll be a change to the thickness of this watch and it'll be reduced to a final thickness of 12.6 millimeters. The crown size will be increased from 5 millimeter here to a more substantial and in my eyes an improvement of 7 millimeter. Sovereign have also stated that the date window will now match the subdials and the flex of the bracelet will be changed to give you a better wearing experience. Now I love reusable packaging. And not from the point of view of, say, recycling, but of course being conscious of the environment is always a benefit. But the package on the Sovereign calendar is reusable because it's a travel pouch. It really is a great addition and I love these button fastenings that they've put onto the watch cushion. The Kickstarter price for this is at $515 US dollars and that will save you over $185 off of its full retail price. So a bargain can be had if you get in from the ground up and back the Kickstarter campaign. That pricing is very good, especially for the premium finish and the feel that this watch has. It's a real bargain for what you get. And let's check out these dimensions. So as I mentioned previously, the thickness is going to be reduced. That's a positive because it's a stubby little watch and that reduction will be a welcome improvement. Online, this watch does look a lot larger than it actually is. But in hand and on wrist, I couldn't quite believe how well it was proportioned. You know what they say, do not judge a book by its cover. The case shape is ultra modern, a real sports watch for sure, with its aggressive angles and sharp lines, it certainly draws inspiration from high-end luxury sport watches from some of the top Swiss watch brands, but it's different enough to garner its own respect from you because it's not a direct copy. I was sent the 316L PVD rose gold version. For me, it's a little too gold, but I can say that many eyes were drawn to my wrist when I have been wearing this. It's a real showstopper and a beautiful wrist companion. If gold tones are your thing, then you're going to fall in love. The bezel is highly polished and that complements the brushing to the rest of the case. And on the side, you can see there is some branding and that being the brand name. And that's a real bone of contention for some watch collectors and it will put some of you off. I personally feel it really adds to this modern flair that the watch brings. The rear of the watch has an included display case back. I've tested to see if it's sapphire glass, but the diamond selector says no. Along the outside, we have the model name, our water resistance of 100 meters, and sapphire glass. But that is, of course, for the upper side of this watch. So the crown will be bigger on the final version. For me, that's a great upgrade. When I received this, I automatically thought the crown looked to have been an afterthought and maybe added at the last minute. So well done Sovereign on noticing that the smaller crown just didn't go. The crown is a screw down one and it has been signed with the Sovereign logo. Above the crown we have this pusher. The pusher in fact changes our month, which you can see here on the subdial at 3 o'clock. 
Sovereign have gone with a nice piece of domed sapphire crystal, and it has been a pain trying to photograph and video this watch. And that is down to it having no anti-reflective coating. And that's the first real negative I found with this watch. But from a negative, we talk about a positive, and that's the movement. The included movement is the Miyota 9100. With its decorated rotor, it's clear to see Sovereign have really put that extra effort into giving you the best option for your money. A movement that beats at 28,800 beats per hour, and with five complications, this is no run-of-the-mill movement. You can expect a power reserve of 40 hours, and it supports hacking and hand-winding. We touched upon the subdials in the review, but what do they actually do? So when we look up at the 12 o'clock, you'll find you have a power reserve. And that will show you how much power is left in the movement before you need to hand wind it or pull it on a watch winder. At the 3 o'clock, we have our month dial. And that's where Sovereign has chosen to display your months of the year. And because of the size of the dial, they've only been able to include six months of the year and then with a line in between. So for example, you've got February line which would be the March, April line and then June so that line would have been May. The sundial at 6 is our 24 hour subdial so as you can see it's now showing 2 o'clock and that's 2 a.m. At the 9 o'clock we have our day subdial and the dial there is big enough to show all our days of the week. And we have a final complication down here at the 4 o'clock and that's our date window. So this watch is really all you need to track the time and date. There are so many complications, but each with its own use, and I'm a real fan of this. What stands out more than anything is the rich, vivid burgundy dial that this watch has. It's aptly named the wine, and it matches the rose gold tones extremely well. We have thin hands, which is a perfect choice because it makes this busy dial more legible. Had Sovereign gone with anything a bit thicker, I think the readability would have been very hard, so a great design choice for the hands. All indices have been applied and are rose gold to match the casing, bracelet, hands and even down to your minute track. The combo of rose and wine is different and it might not be for those more subtle watch fans out there, but there is nothing subtle about this watch and that is this watch's appeal. It's not going to get overlooked in a very oversaturated watch market. There is loom on this watch, and I'm pleased to say it's BGW9, and it's time to see if it's any good. So overall, the loom is great. Being a non-diver, I'm happy with these results. The bracelet on this is so impressive. A very premium feel and finish makes this watch seem a lot more expensive than it actually is. The bracelet is made up of solid H-links and solid N-links. It is quite stiff, so I do think the change to how it wears in the final release, again, is another welcome upgrade. The center of the link is highly polished, and frequent viewers of mine know I'm not a huge fan, but it is a good choice for this watch, and definitely adds to the overall beauty of this watch. Resizing the bracelet is super easy because of the inclusion of the screw links, and you've got to love when watch brands make these DIY jobs easy for us. I really love the buckle on this watch with that Sovereign S, and it's a very responsive two-button pushed deployant clasp, which is also milled. So like I said, a premium finish and premium feel for this watch. So we get to that part of the video where I tell you what I rate and what I hate. But before I do, please, if you've enjoyed this video, hit the subscribe button. It's free, don't you know? And also, if you've loved this video, give it a thumbs up too. Okay, everybody, set. Okay, let's see a thumbs up, please. So let's start with what I hate. First of all, the color of the metal. And I might be coming across a little bit harsh, considering it's a great job and it's finished and coated very well. But for me, it's way too blingy. But if you love that in-your-face styling, then this is definitely for you. I would have preferred maybe getting hands-on with the stainless steel version. But the great thing is that there is a choice for everybody. But for me, my choice wouldn't have been the gold. I would have said the crown is too small, but that's being addressed in the final release. So that's not a bad thing. 
and also the watch could have benefited from some anti-reflection coating added to the crystal. So overall I think it is a good offering and it's not too much to hate really, just only down to personal tastes. But what do I rate? For me, the standout is the wine coloured dial. It really is such a beautiful tone of red. I really also like the sub dials and all their functions and it's extremely handy and a good use of the movement. I love the bracelet, it feels substantial and of great quality and I really dig the case shape and size. And that pretty much wraps up today's video. If you want to check out reviews of the other colours before placing your order, I will pop some links in the description down below. And one final thought, if you want something different, then this certainly is a watch you need to check out. You take care guys, and remember, I'm an enthusiast and not an expert. Cheers!